All right, geometry fans, today our topic, three-dimensional cylinders. So we're going to start by drawing a cylinder, which is kind of like a can. Think of a can of soup. I'm going to draw an oval. I'm going to draw two vertical lines down. And then I'm going to draw an oval again, except for the, the top part of the oval, I'm going to make it dotted. That's the back part of the can. One thing you're going to notice about a cylinder is that it's actually similar to a prism. A prism has two bases. Okay, if I go back to, to the notes from the other day here, just to show you this. So a prism, this is a triangular prism. It has two bases that are congruent and parallel. So left and right, those are the bases. Or if it's hexagonal, top and bottom, those are the bases. Well, a cylinder has two bases. In this case, they're the circles. So two bases that are circles. So the only difference is that instead of being a polygon, like a triangle or a hexagon or a rectangle or a trapezoid, this time the bases are circles. So the formulas are going to look a little bit different. But again, two bases that are circles, they are congruent and they are parallel to each other. So in this case, top and bottom, those are my bases. Because they're circles, there are actually less variables to deal with. Anytime you talk about a circle, you have to be thinking about radius, so we need that. And the other is going to be h, which is the height of the cylinder, so radius and height. All right, so the formulas, lateral area, 2 times pi times r times h. 2 pi r h. Now 2 pi r should look very familiar to you because that is the formula for circumference. So in other words, that's the perimeter of the base times h, which is the height. So if you go back again to the prism, yeah, I'll come back to this, lateral area is h times p, perimeter of the base times the height. So this is the same exact formula. Think of this, if this was a soup can, this would be like the label that wraps around the can. Okay, surface area, the formula is 2 pi rh, that's going to be your lateral area, plus the two bases, the top and the bottom. So there's two bases. What's the area of the base, which is a circle? It's pi r squared. So lateral area plus you have two circles to add in, two areas of circles. Again, that's kind of like, here's your lateral area, 2 times capital B, except because it's a circle, we know the formula for the area of a circle is 2 pi r squared. Volume, okay, for a prism, was area of base times height, capital B times H. Well, what's the area of a circle, the base, pi r squared, times the height? Those are going to be your three formulas. All right, so let me give you an example here. So we're going to draw a different uh, cylinder. I'm going to draw one of these. Okay, not a great picture. I apologize for that. And let's say that we know that this is 9. And let's say that we know that this is 15. Okay, so you got 9, you got 15. And we want to find lateral area, surface area, volume. Find LA, SA, volume. Okay, now here's the thing. We need to know two variables. We need the height for LA. It's 2 pi times R times H. So I'm going to set up my parentheses for that. We know the height. The height is 9. What we do not know yet is the radius. We need this right here. But one thing that we can do is I'm actually going to draw the whole diameter. And what that creates, if you look at this triangle, we will assume the height is perpendicular, that it creates 90 degrees with the bases. So what we've got is a right triangle, and I can call this side x. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, the hypotenuse is the 15, so that would be my C. So we'll say x squared plus 9 squared equals 15 squared. 
So that would become 81 equals 225. We'll subtract 81. So x squared equals 144. And to undo the square, we square root both sides. x is 12. Now 12 is the diameter. We want the radius. So if 12 is this whole thing, the radius is half that, which is 6. So the number that I'm going to put into the formula here, 2 pi times r times h, radius is 6. And when we do this, if you do a couple ways to look at it here, if you multiply 2 times 6 times 9, you get 108. You can write your answer as 108 pi. Notice I didn't multiply the pi yet. 108 pi. Um, let's say that this was centimeters. So this would be centimeters squared because it's an area, unit of measurement squared. This is what we call the exact solution. 108 pi is exact. But what if I did 108 times pi? Now, pi is approximately 3.14, and if I do that, it'll give me a decimal, 339.3. I'll round that 2 up to a 3. So you could also write your answer, 339.3 centimeters squared. That is the rounded solution. Now, they're both good. You can use both of them, okay? Or you can use either one. The exact solution is exact. As soon as you round it, you've created a little bit of error. Normally, this is going to be good as well, okay? But there's two ways to write that. So that's your LA. Surface area. So that was 2 pi rh plus, we have two bases, two circles, which are both pi r squared. The lateral area we already found, that was 108 pi. I'll write the exact answer. Plus 2 pi times radius squared. Well, the radius is 6. So 6 squared is 36. 36 times 2 is 72 pi plus 108 pi. So the surface area, you can either write 180 pi centimeters squared, that's exact, or if we take the calculator, 565.5 or 565.5 centimeters squared. Both answers are good. Okay, both answers work. So we've got lateral area, surface area. Last one is the volume. The volume is pi r squared times the height. Well, at this point, we've already got the radius is 6, and we've got the height is 9. So 6 squared is 36 times 9. Let's see, 36 times 9. Let me take that on the calculator. 324. So that's 324 pi. Now this would be inches, I'm sorry, centimeters cubed. Centimeters cubed, because now you're talking volume, you're talking space. Or if I do 324 and then pi, 1017.9. 1017.9. Centimeters cubed. Okay, so those are your answers there. Okay, so just going back to the front here, lateral area, that's kind of like the label on a can. Surface area would be the aluminum, the can itself, the metal for the can, and then the volume, the space inside, that would be your soup. So you can think about it that way. All right, I want to show you one more example here. And let me take another piece of paper. Okay, so for this example, let's say you were given some other information. Let's say that the circumference 
of the base is 10 pi. Let's say the volume of the cylinder, so it's a cylinder, is 225 pi. What's the height? What's the height of the cylinder? Okay, so on the side here, let's think about this. Here's our picture. The circumference of the base, so that would be one of the circles is 10 pi. The volume is 225 pi. So they tell you the amount of filling. What we don't know is the height. So we're trying to find H. Well, the problem is, is that we also do not know what the radius is, and we need to find that. Now, the distance around the base is 10 pi for the circumference. But you also know that the circumference of a circle is 2 pi times r. So I'm going to make an equation here. 2 pi times r equals the 10 pi. So we have this equation, we can solve this for the radius. I'm going to divide by 2 pi to solve this. This is 2 pi times r, so to undo multiplication we divide. So we'll divide by 2 pi. Radius equals 10 divided by 2 is 5, pi divided by pi is gone. So the radius is 5. Now we can use that because volume is pi r squared times h. And they tell us that the volume of the cylinder is actually 225 pi. Well, let's put the 5 in for the radius. Five squared is 25, so I'm going to write this as 25 pi h times h equals 225 pi. We're solving for the height. This is 25 pi times the height, so to undo that, let's divide by 25 pi. Now again, what happens is you get h equals, the pi's reduce to 1, they cancel. 225 divided by 25 is 9. And that is your solution. And that's the end of the notes.